This is my bike helmet. It's been with me through thousands of miles, dozens of adventures, and unfortunately, more than one spill. Most notably, a face plant back in February. Now, most people know you're supposed to replace a helmet after a crash, but why is that? As you can see, it definitely has some signs of visible wear and tear, and I was getting tired of my friends reminding me that I really needed to replace it. So, I went and got a new helmet. But it got me thinking, when do you actually need to replace your helmet? Welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Andrew and this is Bike Life Unchained, a channel where we explore bike cultures in cities all over the US and beyond. But today we're taking a little break from that to talk about something different. Your head. I've been wearing this specialized helmet for, I'm not even sure how long, but it's definitely been more than five years. And if you look at a lot of manufacturers' websites, they say bike helmets have a shelf life of about three to five years. And after that time period, they need to be replaced. The reasoning behind this is that these things get exposed to a lot of UV radiation from the sun when you're out on a ride, and that starts to break down the strength of the EPS foam, that's a fancy name for this styrofoam, and compromises the safety of the helmet. Now that seems like it would make a lot of sense, but don't you think the people that sell the helmets might have a little bit of bias towards getting you to buy a new one every three to five years? Thankfully, this subject has been widely studied in peer-reviewed journals, so we're gonna talk about the science of when to replace your helmet. This helmet has visible signs of wear and tear, but what if it wasn't for those scrapes and dings and cracks? What if the helmet looked fine? Is it still okay to wear? The answer to this lies with a simple question. Has the helmet been involved in a wreck? The technology behind helmets is pretty simple. They're made out of EPS foam, which is basically a fancy word for styrofoam. And the way that styrofoam protects your brain is by compressing and absorbing energy on impact. This styrofoam is not like the styrofoam peanuts where you can squish them and they come back. This is that hard styrofoam you find like in a TV box or something. And if you've ever played around with that, you know that it's brittle. And if you squish it, it doesn't come back and retain its shape. And this is the key element of what makes a helmet less protective after a wreck. Scientists have extensively studied what makes for a safe bike helmet. And the results are pretty interesting. The price of a helmet is not a good measure of how safe it is. Peer-reviewed studies have found cheap helmets that protected better than much more expensive helmets. And counter to what helmet manufacturers might suggest, age did not affect how well a helmet protected someone. A 2017 study from the Annals of Biomedical Engineering tested 770 field-used bicycle helmets aged between 0 and 26 years old. All of the helmets had no crash damage and met safety standards when new. The results showed that helmet age showed either no effect or only a very slight increase in head acceleration. Helmets up to 26 years old did not lose their ability to attenuate impacts. Here's what did work. Helmets with rotation dampening technology significantly reduce rotational acceleration of the head. For example, helmets using the MIPS low friction layer showed up to 30% reduction in rotational forces transmitted to the head. All right, great news. Just because this helmet was cheap and older than five years old does not necessarily mean that it needed to be replaced. It even has the MIPS technology that keeps my brain from getting thrown around too much inside my skull. But if the helmet has been involved in an impact, that changes everything. A fascinating 2021 study found that helmets can lose their protective ability even when they look okay on the outside. To test this, researchers dropped bike helmets from heights that produce concussions, about 90 to 100 Gs of force. They then tested the foam inside and showed before and after photos to everyday people and the result was that most people couldn't spot the damage. But the lab test showed clear changes, crushed foam, stiffer material, and a reduced ability to absorb future impacts. The damage was there, it just wasn't visible. The implication is unambiguous. A helmet can be rendered unsafe after a crash, even if it looks fine. Now that might sound pretty intuitive, but in practice, a lot of people don't do this. A study of equestrian riders found that 78% of them did not replace their helmets even after a crash, which goes against all safety guidelines. And I'm not proud to say that I continued wearing this helmet for several months after my faceplant in Arizona. All that to say, it was definitely time to do some helmet 
helmet shopping. The good news is we have that study that shows just because a helmet is expensive doesn't mean it protects your head any better, so I could protect my head just fine with a cheaper helmet. The bad news is, like most cyclists, I always want to buy the most expensive piece of gear available. That's why I got the Trek Ballista Road Aero Helmet. I mean, look at this thing. It just looks like a Ferrari. There's just one thing it's missing. Alright, so you don't need to buy a 354 helmet to protect your brain. How do you know which helmet will protect you? The good news is the engineers at Virginia Tech have a well-established safety rating program for helmets of all types, including bike helmets. They rank these helmets with a STAR method, which stands for Summation of Tests for the Analysis of Risk. It's a way to figure out how well a bike helmet protects your head from getting a concussion in real crashes. The helmets are dropped onto a tilted surface to mimic real-world bike crashes where your head hits the pavement at an angle, not just straight on. They test six different locations on the helmet, two crash speeds, and four helmets per model, so it's not just a fluke. So that's 24 crash tests per helmet. The helmets are then given a score based off these tests. The lower the score the better the helmet was at protecting your brain and they're assigned a one through five star rating the top rated helmet is the poc colaris and the lowest rated helmet is the base camp urban commuter so just because a helmet is old doesn't mean it needs to be replaced you do need to replace it if it's been involved in any kind of impact even if that impact seemed minor you also don't have to spend a lot of money for five star protection in fact the 18th best helmet that virginia tech tested cost just 65 dollars that's the giant rev comp mips helmet you do need to spend a lot of money if you want to look really cool well old friend you've served me well Thanks again for watching. If you like this video, please hit the thumbs up and subscribe. I'd love to have you on board. If you'd like to support the channel, you can either join my Patreon at the link below or buy my stickers. I have three sticker designs available for sale and they are at the link in the description of this video.